Well, when you're changing the culture, when you're changing basically guys that made up the bulk of this team for more than a decade, uh, you're looking at a rebuild that should take, you know, two, three, four years at, at the earliest. Mike Conley, Zach Randolph, Tony Allen, Marcus Gasol, those guys were here for, you know, 10 years together, made seven straight playoff appearances. So you just don't pull the scab off of that and get right back into contention. So you were looking at, you know, multiple seasons to try to reload it and rebuild it. So this was a team that had a lot of work ahead of it at the time. I think in general, rebuilds in the NBA take longer now than they used to take. Franchises have smarter general managers, deeper staffs, more scouting. And I think finding the value is a lot tougher than it used to be. So when a team embarks on a rebuild now in the NBA, it's not an overnight thing. And I think fan bases have probably gotten a little bit used to seeing this thing take two years, three years, something like that. The Grizzlies went into this rebuild with, with Jaron Jackson, who was a strong piece, and knew they were gonna have a lottery pick, but there's a lot of other pieces that you gotta fill in around those guys. The second pick will be made by the Memphis Grizzlies. The way the lottery played out was just incredible. There really wasn't a question who the Grizzlies would take with that two pick. Everyone knew Zion was gonna go one. Everyone knew Ja was gonna go two. And when the Grizzlies got that two pick, and John Morant, who was arguably the most exciting player in college basketball the last couple of seasons. I am uh, honored and humbled to be the new head coach of the Memphis Grizzlies. Taylor was a bright guy. I mean, he came from a great lineage and heritage of coaches from Mike Budenhoser in Atlanta and Milwaukee back to Greg Popovich. He knows how to communicate. He knows how to draw up plays. He knows how to motivate. And basically, Taylor Jenkins is one of the guys that checked off all of the boxes that the Grizzlies needed at this stage of their building process. Mike Conley has been shipped to the Utah Jazz. The Jazz, in return, sending to Memphis a package that includes Grayson Allen, Kyle Korver, Jake Crowder, and the 23rd pick in Thursday's draft, plus a protected 2020 first-round pick. In terms of getting value for Conley, you wanted to get as many assets as you could possibly get. And then what they were able to do was take those assets and turn them into even more assets. And so on the front end, you get veteran players that could contribute to you if you wanted to use them. Or, like Corver, you're able to move them for even more value. They didn't just trade Mike Conley for the sake of trading Mike Conley. They were actually got some assets that are gonna play a, a big role down the road, but also played a big role right away. I think you saw what they were able to flip that first round pick and move up and get Brandon Clark. I think across the board, everybody agrees that they nailed last off season. Now the biggest piece of that is getting lucky and getting the number two pick in the draft. But what you do after that really matters. And in terms of trading what they had to trade in order to build for the future and acquire assets, I mean, I don't think you could fault really any of the moves. I mean, most of them have worked out famously. At the end of the day, it's the team that's going to be the most competitive, the most together, and the team that has the most fun. And we got that. As a new head coach, I really wanted to seek the opportunity to also be the head coach of the Summer League team to get that prime opportunity. We have so many young players to have them all come out, and we also had so many veteran players come out and visit and spend time with our Summer League team. This team was going to be connected. Jaron Jackson Jr. was at Taylor Jenkins' press conference on day one saying, Coach, I'm willing to do anything and anywhere you want me to be. That followed the team all the way to Las Vegas and Salt Lake City and you saw veteran players young veterans wanting to be around this team even though they weren't able to play. I would definitely say Summer League was all about establishing relationship which is at the core of uh, what our culture is built on. Big emphasis on how we're going to play offensively, how we're going to play defensively, how we're going to practice, you know this this mentality of how we're going to work. I think our habits are something that we definitely preached a lot and tried to really through Utah and Vegas really try to get concrete habits that we could lay this foundation with going into the start of the season. For a young team like the Grizzlies, you have so many young guys who are going to end up playing a role in the season as the season goes along. Even guys like Ja, who, who didn't play, he was coming off a rehab for surgery, getting to be around and, and hear the, the nomenclature and hear the play calls and all these different things was, I think, really big for him. Ja Morant had to sit out, but Brandon Clark really came to the forefront to show that, listen, this guy could be a steal of this draft when you talk about the way he was playing both ends of the floor. <laughs> He ended up winning Las Vegas Summer League MVP. Yeah! BC, you to go! Yeah, BC! For the Grizzlies to be able to go out there and win the dang thing, it was huge. And I think it, the other thing to me that the value of it is 
you see that all this work matters and, and that there's a result, there's a positive result. If you're gonna put in the work and do what the coaching staff is asking you to do and run the plays and all that stuff, it actually has some value and, and, and you can win and it'll it'll pay off. My relationships with the players, obviously critical, getting them to understand how we're gonna work, what our habits are gonna be, how we're gonna play, what their roles are. So it was a great first opportunity for me to be able to sit down, develop those relationships, live it out on the courts of uh, Utah and Vegas over the summer, and then really get ready for the start of the season and make sure we had a leg up so that we weren't missing a beat when we first got the whole team together that first day of training camp we could hit the ground running i think heading into training camp there were more questions than there were answers about the grizzlies so many young players new coaching staff new front office and you really needed a, a roster you really needed to realize whose numbers was who whose last name was who because they were all coming together for the most part for the first time i don't think anybody had any idea what to expect going into the season. You had a coach that we had never seen coach before. You had a rookie point guard, which the success rate is extremely rare. Is Jaron back from the injury that kept him out the last half of his rookie year? What's gonna become of Dylan Brooks? He was gonna head into a contract year and what kind of player is he gonna be? He missed most of the last season with injuries. Then you have the new guys coming in. It was a situation where you had a group of young guys over here, a group of rookies over there, a group of mid-career guys in the middle, and Taylor Jenkins' job was to blend it all together, and that started with communication. So that was key from day one. What is the most important thing we're about in Memphis? We compete, all right? Hey, more energy, more energy, more talk, I gotta hear you. One big thing for us is multiple efforts. I wanna challenge you guys right now to make it hard on yourselves. Training camp of preseason, very unique with a collection of a lot of players, whether veterans or rookies or young players that have never really played with each other. You know, we obviously talk a lot about the youthfulness of our team, but we also talk about the newness of our team. and. Really trying to establish leadership, you know, from day one is, is very important. I'm a big believer on that happening organically. It was a different energy in the room. You were used to having Mark Gasol's voice, Mike Conley's voice there for the better part of a decade, but now you were seeing some newer voices start to emerge. There was sort of a feeling out process. Guys were trying to figure out their role, figure out how much of a leadership role am I allowed to take? A guy like, you know, Ja, who's a, who's a kid who's never played in the NBA, but he's your point guard. And you know, when does he step up into that role? Jaron had been on a team with Mike Conley and Marcus Ole, like two born leaders, and now those guys are gone. So does Jaron step up into that role? I think that after the preseason and after training camp, that I was hopeful that they would be able to get more wins than a lot of people thought they would get. I think you looked at the roster and you said, they're not bringing off guys that aren't going to be able to compete. Once you saw them on the court, you thought, man, they've got, they've got a good amount of good players on this team. We're laying a great foundation right now. Here we go. Family on three. One, two, three. Yeah. Family.